hey, Mr. Obama, we need you to go ahead and sit this one out, boss. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about Barack Obama's very tone-deaf speech that he delivered out there in Virginia while campaigning for Terry McAuliffe to become the state's next governor. Now, the election is upon us. I'm sure they have early voting in Virginia, but the election day is Tuesday, November the 2nd, and today is Thursday, October 28th. So we're talking about a few days. The election will be over. And the race is neck and neck. Glenn Young and the Republican is pretty much tied with the Democrat, Terry McAuliffe. Um, the current governor, Ralph Northam, remember the blackface guy? He cannot run right now because there's a law in Virginia where you can't run back-to-back -back gubernatorial campaigns. That's why the former governor, McAuliffe, is running again because there was a break in between his last term and the term he's trying to run for right now. But I'll talk about that part a little bit later. Barack Obama was rolled out to be a big gun and help McAuliffe get over the hump to break that dead heat between him and Youngkin. But in the process, he may have kind of made it worse, at least in my humble opinion. Now, before I go any further, let's roll the clip. In this clip, you're going to see Barack Obama speaking at VCU in Richmond with McAuliffe, and he put his foot straight into his mouth. Now, after we get done watching that, I'll come back. I'll talk about what was said there. Then I'll give you my two cents and my deep detail analysis. And then I'll wrap it on up with a nice bow on top. So without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. Why, why is it Republicans don't want you to vote? What, what is it that they're so afraid of? Yeah, you know, it, 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 I would assume, Terry, if, if, if they think they've got better ideas, why don't they just go make the case? Tell us your ideas. Tell us why you think they're going to be better. Tell us how it's going to help that man get a job or, or help that young person go to college or, or help that person get a trade. Hey, just explain it. And if, if you've got good ideas, people will flock to your ideas, but, but that's not what they try to do. Instead, you're trying to rig elections. Because the truth is people disagree with your ideas. And when that doesn't work, you start fabricating lies and conspiracy theories about the last election, the one you didn't win. That's not how democracy is supposed to work. We don't have time to be wasting on these phony, trumped up culture wars, this fake outrage that, that right wing media is peddles to juice their ratings. And the fact that he's willing to go along with it instead of talking about serious problems that actually affect serious people, that's a shame. That's not what this election's about. That's not what you need, Virginia. Instead of forcing our communities to cut back at a time when we're just starting to recover, we should be doing more to support people who are educating our kids and keeping our neighborhoods safe. All right, so you saw that, you heard that. Now, there is so much to say I'm not really sure where to start. First things first, if you guys don't know me, it's your first time watching or whatever, um, I'm from Virginia, okay? I was born in a place called Rand, West Virginia, very small town in Canal County, uh, the birthplace of Randy Moss and his brother, Eric. So shout out to Rand University, Canal County, West Virginia. Shout out to the whole state. I was born there, but as a baby, as a goo goo ga ga, my parents moved to Virginia. So I grew up there in a seven city area. That's what we call it in Virginia, seven cities. That's Hampton Roads. That's Norfolk, Virginia Beach, Chesapeake, Portsmouth. That's where I grew up. Okay. And I have family in Richmond. So I've been up there a lot. I, I've been up in Short Pump and, and Henrico, all that. I've been all in Richmond. Uh, Kings Dominion, of course, I've been there. Um, I got family way out west by West Virginia and Roanoke, Virginia, where my dad grew up, actually. So and I got family in Northern Virginia as well, which is where a lot of politics happens in Virginia because of its proximity to D.C. So I know Virginia very well. I'm from there. I know all about it. Unlike Barack Obama, who is from Indonesia and Hawaii, and then as an adult moved to Chicago. Unlike Terry McAuliffe, who is from Syracuse, New York, and moved to Virginia as an adult to basically be a D.C. swamp rat, okay? 
This is the same guy that worked on Hillary Clinton's 2008 campaign. This is the same guy that was getting checks from guys like Jeffrey Epstein and putting that in the coffers of the Clintons. Okay, that's who Terry McAuliffe is. That's who Barack Obama is. What do they know about Virginia? Nothing. So when you're going to make a speech like that, talking about, oh, this pointless culture war, it's right-wing conspiracy theorists, nut jobs, all this and that, you got to ask yourself for a moment, do you really know what you're talking about? Do you really understand Virginia? The reason, in my humble opinion, the reason why the race between Terry McAuliffe and the Republican Glenn Youngkin, who, by the way, is from Virginia, unlike the other two guys, the reason why the race is so close is because of the school board stuff, critical race theory, you know, kids being abused, kids being sexually assaulted in the bathroom, okay? So, Barack Obama, when you say that this is a non-issue, it's been drummed up, it's just false outrage, when you say something like that, what are you referring to? Are you referring to the sexual assault of a 12-year-old girl in the bathroom by a boy who, quote-unquote, identifies as trans? Are you calling that... Not really a real thing. Are you calling it homophobia, transphobia, or something like that? What are you really talking about here, sir? Huh? What are you saying exactly? Because if I know VA the way I think I know VA, we don't like that kind of stuff. I don't think anybody like that kind of stuff, really. But especially not in Virginia. The heart of Virginia is very conservative. You guys speaking about Barack Obama, Terry McAuliffe, and the current governor, the blackface guy, Ralph Northam, you guys spend a lot of time in northern Virginia. Now, I know Northam is from Eastern Shore, which is more rural. But you spend so much time in northern Virginia trying to get all this money from D.C. sent to you. You don't understand what's happening in the entire state. Matter of fact, you don't know what's happening beyond uh, Interstate 95. Really, people don't like what is happening with the school stuff. They don't like critical race theory. They don't like their kids being assaulted in bathrooms, right? And then you're talking about, oh, uh, they're making it hard to vote in Virginia. How was it hard to vote in Virginia? Since when? I voted in Virginia. I grew up in Virginia. Never was it difficult to vote. All you got to do is have your ID. It's so simple. I mean, in Virginia, you got to have your ID for a lot in Virginia. Like, let's say you're a poor person, right? They keep talking about marginalized people. People don't have no money. I grew up a lot of my time in Portsmouth, Virginia. Look it up, research it. In Portsmouth and other parts of Virginia, I mean, the poverty is real. And really, once you go out far west, like Big Stone and all that out there, once you go out that way, it's really, really real as far as the poverty. Never have I heard as a youngin, never did I ever think as a youngin that it's hard to vote or that it's, it's not right that we need an ID to go vote, Okay. If you're talking about those that are on government benefits, food stamps and whatnot, Section 8 houses, you got to have ID for that. You got to have more than one form of ID for that. Birth certificate, some kind of bill in your name at your house, proof of residence. You got to have all that stuff to get welfare benefits. So if that's not racist, then why is having an ID to vote racist? What's the, what is the real reason they say that? Now, I cannot read Mr. Barack Obama's mind. I cannot read Terry McAuliffe's mind, but I think that they want to have that door open for any kind of funny business to go on. Maybe there's too many votes in this race and maybe we can't really account for them, but so what? Because nobody had ID. You can have anybody come in there and say, hey, my name is John Jekyllheimer Schmidt and I want to vote. Give me a ballot and they got to do it. If there's no ID requirement, maybe that's the reason why. They're trying to pin it on black folks and other quote unquote, peoples of color and poor peoples as a way to kind of shield it. We all know what's going on. Never have I ever thought that it's racist to be, uh, to be required to have an idea in Virginia to vote or anywhere else. And I'm from there. Unlike the two guys that are trying to say that the things that we're concerned about in Virginia are irrelevant or unimportant. It's so dumb. And I think again, this is the reason why the race is so close. If not for the school board stuff, if not for the very real culture war stuff, I don't believe Youngkin will have a chance. No, nope, because Virginia, I saw it as a kid. When I was a little kid, I would watch some of the political stuff, just observing, not really knowing what's going on, just kind of observing, like during election time for the president or whatever. And I would see that Virginia was always red, solid red. 
back in the 90s, early 90s or whatever, it was solidly red. And then as I got older, got more into adulthood, it's like the more gray hairs I got, the more Virginia became blue. And now it's a solidly blue state. Why? Because of Northern Virginia. That's where all the action happens. That's where, that's where all the money is. One third of the state population is up there. Fairfax and Loudoun, which is the epicenter of the school board stuff. So you can't even ignore it. Generally, people like McAuliffe would ignore the needs of Virginia if they could just focus on Northern Virginia because that's where all the action happens. But now you can't do that because the problems that you were ignoring in Seven Cities, Richmond, Roanoke, Far West, those problems are now right in your backyard in Loughton, right in the D.C. shadow. Now you can't ignore it. That's going to affect the election. So I hope that Mr. Barack Obama's speech helped Glenn Youngkin and did not help Terry McAuliffe the way that he intended. Because quite frankly, he really just dismissed the entire point, the entire reason why McAuliffe is losing. You can't dismiss that and act like it's going to help you. You got to really address it and say what you're going to do to try and fix it. Because if you don't, then that, that whole issue is going to continue and it's not going to change. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? How you feel about what Barack Obama said? Do you think that Republicans are trying to keep Virginians from voting? Are they trying to suppress votes? Um, do you think the culture war stuff is real or is not real? Do you think um, people talking about critical race theory and just general safety of kids in school is irrelevant to talk about? We shouldn't even bring it up. If that's your viewpoint, let me know why in the comments below. You guys pretty much know where I'm at. I'm a Virginia guy through and through. I'm not there anymore. I'm in Tennessee, but still, I'm from Virginia. I, I love Virginia. And unfortunately, the people that live in northern Virginia that come from all over the world, liberal places, mostly trying to get that government money, they have turned the state into a monster, especially in the northern part. But... If the northern part begins to change, if they begin to wake up to see what's happening with the school board, critical race theory, kids being abused, and if that can happen, then the state can go a different direction. But if it can't happen, if people can't see how they've damaged the state, if they can't see how their policies are not working, then I don't really see the state going a different direction. But I hope that people understand what's going on, and I hope to see good results come November the 2nd. And I think that also one last thing before I close for this time, the results of this race are going to be, it's like a, a bellwether. It's going to predict how 2022 is going to go as far as the midterms. And we're going to see some drastic change. That's what I hope, because if we don't go that way, well, we're going to have some serious problems. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.